Good day ladies and gents and welcome to another Mr. Pollock Biology. Uh, it's been a while since my last video but we're going to kick off with some Unit 2 stuff and this is transporting plants and we're looking at how water gets from the soil towards the xylem. So here's our objectives for this session. You're going to explore the structure of the root, you're going to understand how plants absorb water from the soil and we're going to describe how water moves through the, uh, the cortex of the root towards the xylem. So let's start by looking at the cross-section of a root, and that's here. And there are a couple of key things that we need to look at. The first of which are the root hair cells. And you'll have come across these probably in year seven, and again in uh, GCSE. And the root hair cells have those great projections into the soil to increase surface area. The rest of the root, well, we've got the cortex cells, which are between the root hair cells and the endodermis. Then we have the phloem vessels inside the vascular bundle here, and then the xylem vessels here. The phloem, that's involved in transporting sugars and translocation. The xylem vessels are what we're concentrating on today because we're talking about the transport of water. So let's look at the root hair cells to begin with. You'll have seen these guys before, albeit probably without the mitochondria in there. You've got that huge surface area provided by the hair-like projection. And then we have the mitochondria to supply a large amount of ATP through aerobic respiration. And we'll see why that's important just now. So we're going to look at how water gets from the soil into the root hairs. Because this isn't just a passive process. In fact, what we've got is a clever manipulation of the water potential of the root hair cells by the plant. So in pink, the triangles here in the soil are mineral ions, and the blue circles are water molecules. Now, the actual root hair cell cytoplasm has got quite a few solutes in there already, so it's going to have quite a negative water potential. And in fact, if the plant didn't manipulate the water potential, it would probably lose water into the soil. So what we need to do is we need to make the water potential of the root hair cell more negative relative to the soil. And to do that, we actively transport mineral ions from the soil into the root hair. So that's where those mitochondria are coming in, providing the ATP to actively transport those mineral ions against a concentration gradient. Now, because of that movement, the root hair cell now has a more negative water potential relative to the soil. And because of that, water is going to move into the root hair cell by osmosis. Now we've got to imagine this whole thing as a constant cascade of water. So now the first cortex cell has a more negative water potential relative to the root hair cell. So water is going to move along again by osmosis. And this is just going to repeat over and over and over again. Now I should say that this is a continuous process, not a batch process like I've illustrated here. But you've got constant movement of water into the root hair cell, into the cortex, into the second cortex, and so on and so forth towards the xylem. So a very elegant manipulation of water potential here by the plant. Now if we look at the cortex itself, um, there are two routes that water can possibly take through those cells towards the xylem. The first of which is called the symplast pathway, or the symplastic pathway. And this involves the movement of water via the cytoplasm and the tiny little gaps between cells where the cytoplasm is linked um, and they're called plasma desmata. The second route is called the apoplast route or the apoplastic route and this involves the water moving along the cell wall or between the free spaces of the cells. So the cell walls there providing the transport route. Now, once we've gone all the way through the cortex, we reach an area called the endodermis. And here, all of the water is forced into the symplast route by something called the Casparian strip, which is basically a waterproof region in the cell walls that's going to force the water through there. And that's usually comprised of some a compound called subarin or sometimes lignin, which is a waterproof substance. Finally, we're going to look at what happens when we get to the xylem. The only route into the xylem is through the symplast route. So once again, we've got the same sort of process as we had at the root hair cells, where mineral ions are actively transported into the xylem. 
and that causes the water temperature in the xylem to become more negative than the endodermal cells, and then water is going to move into the xylem by osmosis, nice and straightforward. Finally, we should summarise things. So plants use root hair cells and the active transport of mineral ions to manipulate water potential in order to absorb water. And there are two routes through the root. That's the symplast, which is through the cytoplasm, and the apoplast, which is along the cell walls. And then finally, water is forced into the symplastic pathway by the Casparian strip before entering the xylem by the same technique as earlier. I hope that's been helpful for you guys. Thank you very much for watching. Like, comment and subscribe please. Goodbye.